Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second half of Nightline. I'm Mary Sloan, your host, and it's an honor for me to be up here singing with awesome presence tonight. We're going to do a few worship songs here tonight, and then Pastor Rich Butler is going to be bringing the message. And uh, if you know these songs, just sing them with us. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise, and to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, of the Father. You are worthy. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. And when I say his name, all things begin to change. And there's power in the name of the Lord. I know there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, when I say his name, all things begin to change. And there's power. In the name of the Lord, and I feel Jesus. Oh, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus, and He's in.
the presence of the Lord is there. We're going to go to Pastor Rich Butler this time, and he's going to be bringing forth a great message. Pastor Rich. What an honor to be here tonight. Hopefully you've experienced the presence of God so far. That's our, that's our goal here is really to host the presence of God on the airways. So if you're watching in your living room, um, our prayer is that you've already encountered the sweet presence of God. The theme for tonight is the power of agreement. Um, honestly, for many years, I didn't understand the power of agreement. I heard the phrase a lot, but didn't really understand what rightly belonged to me as a believer. But that all changed about 15 years ago. My father-in-law asked me if I would attend a, a gathering, a prayer gathering. He called it a solemn assembly. And I, his name's Billy Joe. I said, Billy Joe, I don't know anything about a solemn assembly. He said, well, we're going to fast and pray together with 400,000 people in Washington, D.C., it was one of the largest gatherings of its kind, and it was called The Call. It was in the year 2000, and we descended upon the mall, and, and for 12 straight hours, we sought the face of God. We asked God to visit America. Um, we worshiped, and I heard this, this theme throughout the gathering that really just pierced my heart, and it, it was about the kingdom of God. Uh, people would take the platform and the stage and they would say, uh, kingdom of heaven come, will of God be done. Now I knew that was in the model prayer. That's what Jesus taught his disciples to pray. But I didn't really fully understand the gravity of that. In fact, for 12 hours, one after another, ministers were releasing the kingdom of God into America. And so just like everything in the kingdom of God, it comes in seed form. So it came into my life in seed form. And so what I did for the year following that gathering is I read everything I could in the Word of God about the kingdom of God. And to be real honest with you, I didn't know much. And one of the reasons why I think it was such a struggle for me is that I live in a democracy. And so do you. You live in a republic. We get to vote. There's a balance of power. And what I quickly realized is that in a kingdom, there is no balance of power. When the king speaks, it becomes binding. It's a law. There's weight on it. So I spent months reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I was asking this one question. Jesus, what is it with the kingdom of God? And I quickly realized in Matthew, when Jesus steps onto the scene and he gives his, his inaugural address when he comes to start his ministry in Matthew 4, 17. He said something that I've heard many times, but as I studied it, like a, a ton of bricks, it fell on me fresh and new. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's how he started his ministry. The word repentance here doesn't mean stop smoking, stop doing things that are bad. It doesn't even mean stop bad behavior. It means change the way that you think. The word that he uses there is a Greek word that literally means to change the way that you process information. So what Jesus was saying is for thousands of years you've had a mindset under the law. And it's not bad, it worked under that system. But now that the kingdom is here, that mindset won't work, won't work anymore. So Jesus starts his ministry by giving the constitution of his kingdom. It's found in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. We call it the Sermon on the Mount. So he starts talking about this inside-out, upside-down kingdom where you actually die to live and you lose to gain. He was turning everything on its head. And he said, you will not get your mind around this unless you begin to change your paradigm. I'll just tell you this, friends. Your life always moves in the direction of your most powerful thought. So I started embracing this kingdom of God. I said, Lord, I want to think like the kingdom. I started seeing scriptures about me being a citizen of the kingdom. 
And in a, in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you where this power of agreement comes in with this kingdom idea. And I quickly realized that I was more familiar with things in the earth realm than I, than I was in the heavenlies. And the Bible says that we're seated with Christ there. I want to tell you that whatever you seek first has the authority to order the rest of your life. Let me say that again. Whatever you seek first, whatever you prioritize in your life, you give that thing the authority and the power to order the rest of your life. That's why I believe in the constitution of the kingdom, Jesus gave a very familiar, famous passage to us. It's in Matthew 6, He says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, or alignment with His government is what that really means, and all these things you need will be added unto you. He's talking in the context of not worrying about what you would eat or what you would drink. In fact, he said, the pagans worry about those things. Your father knows what you need even before you ask. And the way that you get those needs met is not striving. You seek first the kingdom. And when you seek first the kingdom, all the things you need will begin to align in your life. Let me tell you how this began to play out. I was in Haiti on a mission trip with a group of people. And the kingdom of God was so fresh in my heart and in my mind. And as I read the scriptures, the themes of the kingdom really jumped out to me. We were sitting in this really like a hut. I think it held about 200 people. And that night, maybe we had four or 500 packed in there. You know how it, it, how it gets on the mission field. And it was hot. And, and we were going to preach the gospel. And I just sensed the Holy Spirit say, release the kingdom into the room. So I felt prompted to invite everyone up that was deaf in either one ear or both ears. Now, I wasn't by myself. I was with a team of amazing people. And as they lined up, about 12 or 14 lined up in the front, um, I was prompted to go lay hands on them. But as I went to do that, I felt like the Lord said, no, you get them to ask. And as you ask, you just come into an agreement with them asking and you just release the kingdom of heaven. And I said, okay, Lord. So it was awkward. I'm standing back and these, these folks are standing in the front and you, they were desperate for a touch from God and they began to cry out to God, heal me, God, I know it's your will to heal me. And as we came into an agreement, I just in a whisper said, kingdom of heaven come, will of God be done. And in a moment, God opened every single one of their ears. He healed them all. It's like revival broke out. They were running around the room and shouting. And in that moment, I realized that the kingdom of God wasn't some theory it was real. So when we talk about the power of agreement, I want to go back over this scripture that's really the scripture for the night. It's Matthew 18, 18 through 20. It's in red, which means it's coming from the mouth of Jesus. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So what Jesus is literally saying here is that there is a realm that's more real than the physical realm that we can experience, where the birds fly and the grass grows. And we are to be anchored into that realm by faith. And so Jesus said this, Whatever you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will have already been loose there. So Jesus isn't coming up with a new theology that we can control heaven. What he's saying is that if we'll align our lives with the culture of his kingdom, then whatever's going on there, we have the power and authority to release it here. So in other words, there's no sickness in heaven. So I'm not asking God, is it your will to heal the sick? I just know that cancer can't live in that realm. And so what I do is I command cancer to leave. I'm not twisting God's arm. I just know that it's forbidden there. And because it's forbidden there, I can forbid it here. There's some things like righteousness and peace and joy that are loosed there. And because they're loosed there, I have the authority to loose them here. Here's how I know this. Jesus gathers His disciples together, and in Luke 9, 1 and 2, He gives them their marching orders. Here's what it says, Then He called His twelve disciples together, and He gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God 
and to heal the sick. Now, Jesus is introducing two kingdom principles here. One is authority. The other is power. Authority is your right to rule. Power is your ability to rule. A few years ago, I got pulled over by a cop, and it was fascinating because I didn't realize I was speeding. I was on a um, kind of a support road off of Main Road, and there was a cop standing in the middle of the road. So I kind of just tried to go around him. I quickly saw his badge and he pulled me over with his arm. Now he informed me quickly that I was speeding and he reinforced that with a ticket. But that's authority. He could pull me over simply because he had a badge on. He had a right to rule. Now if I were to just ignore his pulling me over with his hand and speed past him, he could pull out some reinforcement that he carries on his hip or maybe throw a tax strip in front of me. That's his power. Jesus gave His disciples both authority and power to walk into regions and release the kingdom of God. Jesus only did a few things. His life was not complicated. He healed the sick, He drove demons out, and He preached the kingdom. That's all He did. In fact, Jesus could walk into a region and not even open His mouth, and the demons would beg Him not to torture them. Why? Because He carried this realm upon Him. I want to give you a quick definition of the kingdom. The kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting that territory with his purpose, his will, and his intentions. And I want to tell you this, my friends, that the kingdom of God goes wherever God wants it to go because it goes inside of you. It's not just the kingdom inside of you is enough. It's your knowledge and understanding of your authority and your power. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. You've been walking with God for many years and, and maybe you're struggling with a sickness and you're somehow trying to figure out how God's using this to teach you a character lesson. Can I just tell you the Holy Spirit is a much better teacher than type 2 diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis or cancer. Now, can God turn those things around for your good? Absolutely. We heard a song earlier about that. What the enemy means for evil, God can work it out for our good. But friends, let me tell you, you have authority over those things. How do I know that? Because it's not permitted in heaven. And Jesus taught His disciples, hey, when you pray, I want you to pray like this. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it's being done in heaven. So I want you to look right now at me while I'm speaking. I want to encourage you and I want to stir the kingdom of God within you. You're not just barely getting along in life. If you know Jesus and He's Lord of your life, you are seated with Him in heavenly places. The kingdom of God is inside of you. So right now, I just stir you to understand your authority and your power. I, I charge you and challenge you to understand the Word of God. This is the constitution of the kingdom. In fact, in Revelation 19, John said when Jesus comes back, He's going to wage a righteous war. He's going to wear a robe that's dipped in blood. He's going to wear a white horse, and His name is going to be the Word of God. The king of the kingdom is anchored into his word. And if you'll get to know this word and you'll come into an agreement with this word, you can have everything it says you can have. You can have divine health. You can have a breakthrough in your finances. You can have reconciliation in your relationships. You can walk in power on the earth. I'm just speaking to somebody tonight that has a child, a son or a daughter that's far from God. Can I just tell you that it's God's will that they come home? So instead of you just begging and saying, oh God, please, 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 why don't you just say in Jesus' name I command you to come home. That's God's will. And because it's God's will, you can come into an agreement and an alignment with that. Amen? Father, I pray that you would take these words tonight and that you would use it as an anchor in our heart. Father, we want to walk in courage and faith. Lord, we're citizens of your kingdom. We're not, uh, we're not earthbound. In fact, we're just temporarily walking through this place. Give us more of a reality of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. We're going to now hear an awesome song by Awesome Presence. all your dreams and your hopes have been cruelly crushed 
by Satan's manifested schemes and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fears don't let the faith you're standing in seem to disappear praise the Lord he can work through those who praise him praise the Lord for our God in heaven's praise praise the Lord for the chains that seem to bind you serve only to remind you they drop Hoppers when he knows himself we're children of the king so lift up the mighty shield of faith for the battle must be won we know that Jesus Christ is risen so Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Love that song when you praise him. We've had a great night tonight. Thank you, awesome presence, for coming out. Thank you, Pastor Rich Butler, for coming out. Tony, my co-host, and and Coach Robert Holfer. Um, Sheila, go to the piano and let's sing. Let's just go out with this song. Uh, let the church say amen. You know, he's done an awesome work here tonight, hasn't he? And we're just agreeing with you tonight for these prayer requests. We're coming into the power of agreement with you. If anyone touches anything, you know, he will be in your midst and he will bring glory and he will bring healing to you tonight. Just two or more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let the church say amen.
Amen. And we touch this prayer request to that and we say we're healed. Let the church say I'm healed. Oh, let the church say I'm healed. My God has spoken. So let the church say. for being with us tonight. We felt your presence here tonight, oh God. Father, we thank you for those that have joined in with us tonight. And we just bless you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God has spoken. Let the church sing.